Okay, so in the last video, we added a particle system to emulate steam as the hamburger is cooking. So I figured we can build on that idea. Right now, when you put the hamburger on the grill, it already looks cooked, and it shouldn't. It really should look raw. So what we're going to do is we're going to demonstrate how you can actually change the texture that is on the hamburger. So I did it offline because there really wasn't much to see. But basically what I did was I imported a new uh, image, 2D image, and then I created a new material. And we reviewed how to do that before. That's when we right clicked, we chose create, you chose uh, material. And then what I did is I dragged and dropped the image to Albedo. And then I just tiled it twice, and that was it. And that created the new material. I named it 10 simply because the pre-existing one was named 11. So what we need to do now is that by default, this has shader 11, the hamburger patty is shader 11 applied to it. What we need to do is through this script, we're going to make the object aware of multiple shaders and then using the script we'll say which shader is being displayed based on how much time it's been on the grill. So let's go to, let's actually close a few of these. Uh, Burger Crate, probably don't need to do anything with that. It's easy enough to open again. Uh, Cheese Crate, not going to do anything else with that at the moment. We can close that. We'll close bun crate, but we'll definitely need that one again when we look at creating the inventory system on the uh, cutting board. But at least we don't have quite so much up here now. And we can get rid of uh, trash bin for the moment. Again, we're not deleting those. They're all still here. We're simply closing out the tab so we don't have so many tabs across the top. So, with the patty con script... What we need to do is this is what's attached to the hamburger patty. So we need to create variables to represent, to store those new materials. So public material, and we'll call this raw patty, and then public material cooked patty and then eventually what we'll do is we'll create a third one that's called uh, burnt and that's when it's like black so as you can see there's many many different types of variables there's the objects there's the text string now we're looking at materials so watch what happens so we got the patty selected and those new ones appear. So what we want to do is we want to go to the materials script. Uh, excuse me, not script, the materials folder. My apologies, the materials folder. And drag the raw patty material to that one and the cooked one to this one. As you can see, that is the one that's currently applied. So ultimately, this will be this will be overridden. So we've now made the patty aware of those two materials. Now it's just a matter of applying them. So what we can do is we can have the in the start section this is where we can declare that the raw patty is what should be used so get component mesh renderer material 
and we're going to set it to the raw padding material. And now we'll just test that. We click to instantiate, and there you go. It now has that new texture on it, or should I say the new material on it. And it makes a lot more sense now visually because you've got the steam coming off of it, and it looks raw. And so the next thing is to have a timer decide when to change to the next material. So how do we do that? Well, what we want to do is we create another variable. Public. And let's create a float. And this will be cooking time and I'll start off as zero what we're going to do is we're going to track how much time has passed drop it into that uh, variable and once that variable has gotten to a certain amount uh, have a similar statement like this except rather than being raw patty it will be cooked patty so in the update section we need to have time pass. So that new variable cooking time equals time dot delta time. If you've never seen that before, what it means is uh, delta time, if you remember math, the delta is change. Okay, so the change in time. So how much time has changed? And actually we want a plus in here. So we're taking this new variable and with every single frame, because the update section happens once per frame, with every single frame, we're seeing how much time has passed and adding it in. So we're then going to check when this has hit a certain point, And at that point, we change the uh, texture. Uh, sorry, material. I keep saying texture. Sorry. So if cooking time let's say exceeds three seconds game balance you can make it be as long as you want if cooking time is greater than three then we want something to happen we will take this variable uh, excuse me this statement this command and change it from the raw patty material to the cooked patty material And I didn't do any kind of name and convention here, but I could have put, say, MAT at the end. That way, when it pops up in the list, I would know that I'm looking at a material. And then at some later point, we'd add in a second check that, say, if it exceeds six seconds, then it becomes a burnt patty material, which we have not added yet. So I think... That should about do it. Save your work if you haven't. And the only thing to keep in mind is that this number continues to increase, which means this will continue to be true. So technically, every single frame, the material is being reapplied. So in a very uh, low uh, impact game like this, very low resource intensive, it doesn't really make a difference, but you're going to want to be mindful that things like this, you only want it to happen once. Otherwise, you're using resources again and again and again, reapplying a material that doesn't need to be applied again and again and again. So uh, sorry if I sound like I'm going off on a tangent here, but just because you don't see something happening doesn't mean it's not happening. So the first time this gets applied, you can see it happen because it goes from pink to this, presuming this works correct. But you don't see the fact that it's getting applied again and again and again. So those are the kind of things you have to be mindful of in that you have to eventually go back and optimize your code. You will unfortunately probably have to create a bunch of extra um, variables that say uh, once this has happened, then you have a variable saying that it has happened. And you would check it against here. So you wouldn't just check time. You'd also check that trigger. Okay, has it changed yet? No, it hasn't changed. Go ahead and change it. And now you set the variable indicating that the change has occurred. That way this isn't true over and over again, because right now 
as soon as this is, exceeds three, it continues to be true, and this gets applied again and again and again. So sorry, don't mean to beleaguer the point. I just uh, wanted to take a moment to let you know that just because you don't see something happening doesn't mean it's not happening and taking up processing. Okay. So no error messages. We put our patty there. And after three seconds, it turns brown. Absolutely perfect. No problems whatsoever. And then the next step would be, like I said, that you'd have, say, a black one where it's burnt. You could also change. So this, rather than being steam, looks more like smoke. And uh, that gets you actually through the cooking cycle at that point. So um, doing good. Uh, and as it stands, here's the thing. It would keep cooking even if you move it over here, though. So watch this. Now, we can't put it over there anymore without a bun. That's one of the benefits of having uh, not just be able to double click and have it come over here. You have to click on the bun. So fortunately, that can no longer be done, which is good. So we'll put our bun. We'll put it. We'll move it. Oh, I took, sorry, kind of delayed. Let's do that again. So bun, cook, click, move. See how it still cooks? You don't want to cook if it's not over here. So that means that this, rather than happening every single frame, should only happen every single frame if it's still on the grill. So right now, we have this that allows for the moving of the patty. We don't have to worry about this when it gets thrown away because ultimately the object is destroyed. But this is where it gets moved in here. So if place patty is set to yet, Y for yes, it gets moved. But place patty happens just when you click on the patty. So on mouse down, if place patty is no, and you're not placing cheese, you're not placing ketchup, and you haven't selected a bun, if you've just clicked on it, then place patty is equal to yes. And then up here, in update, as we said, this is where the patty actually gets moved. So what we need to do is we need to indicate that the patty has been moved, and if the patty has been moved, then this no longer happens, and that you can't cook it anymore. So I think that's easy enough. We just give uh, place patty yet another variable because uh, value. It's been y and n, and now we could give another one for say l for locked. And this is the reason why I don't use booleans, because a boolean you can have uh, as two statuses, basically true or false. In this case turns out we need a third status. So what we'll do is place patty is equal to, we'll actually spell it out the word locked. Or maybe, eh, let's do placed. Hmm. Yeah, we'll say locked because you can't do anything else with it. So if the placed patty is set to locked, then this will no longer happen. So if cooking time is greater than three, and place patty equals locked uh, does not equal lock, excuse me. To do does not equal, it's an exclamation point. So place patty exclamation point equals locked. So if it does not equal locked, then you can do this. Because it's equal to locked once you've moved it. So first, let's make sure we didn't break the cooking. So we'll put our patty there. Continues to cook. Place our bun. Cook, click, move. 
perfect. It no longer continues to cook. So gross, but yes, you could serve them an undercooked hamburger, but that's part of the food service industry is that you don't want to serve something that's undercooked because you're in a rush to get to the next order. So that I think is just about enough for one video because that actually covers a lot. So now rather than having just one material, we can cycle through different materials to indicate its level of, of being cooked. It also does not continue to cook if it's moved over here. That was an easy fix. And actually, let's run one more thing. Let's make sure we didn't break the toppings. Because it's not just testing what you did change. It's testing the things that you don't think you changed as well. So let's get it cooked. We'll move it. Cheese, ketchup. OK. Now we'll do this one more time. This time we'll move it when it's raw. Cheese, ketchup. Excellent. And one more iteration. We will do raw and just ketchup. OK. All right, I think that should do it for this video. We got a lot accomplished. So now we have a rudimentary cooking cycle. As I said, it needs a third status for when it gets burned. And I think that's about it for this one. Uh, and I believe once we've done that, then we'll finally dig into the inventory system where there'll be multiple places here, multiple places here. And then at that point, uh, all that's left is really having the customers show up and uh, ask for their orders. Uh, the orders will probably be generated by like a random number generator. So, uh, you, you know, number one through five, if the number one comes up, they want a plain hamburger. If number two comes up, they want a hamburger with ketchup. Number three, hamburger with just cheese, that kind of thing. And so each number would uh, represent a variation of what you can give them. So I think that should about do it for this video. Again, we made good progress. In the next video, we'll probably add the burn status. Um, and like I said, the inventory system as well. Okay, so that should do it.